Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is our official last money date of the year. I'm excited. I've got my New Year celebration gear. I am ready for 2018. How about you? Thanks for joining me. I want to chat with you today about a couple of tips I have for you to implement in the next really two days that are left in this year. We just had a big tax reform happen last week and that's what I wanted to chat with you. But you, once you're jumping on, thanks for being here. Let me know how your holidays are going. We're right in the midst of 2017 holiday season. I hope everybody's doing well. I am. Uh, this week has been interesting and I'll tell you more. Hi Wanda, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Good to have you here. So, before we get into discussing the last minute uh, tax tips that I have for you, let's run through our regular uh, schedule of what we do on money dates, and then we can get to the actual real juice of this discussion. I also actually wanted to share something with you that was quite interesting. Uh, money date is officially six months old. Can you believe it? I just started to think about it today because I was prepping uh, for next, actually for next quarter, was laying out the content and just uh, planning my marketing calendar. And I looked back and it's like, wow, uh, we started in June. So I'm excited. It's been that long, but it's actually, um, it's been a quite a fun ride. Hi, Lori. Thanks for hopping on. So it is here to stay. I am going to continue and I've got some exciting things coming up in 2018 for you. So let me just make sure that I take this mask off so you guys can see me. Um, well, if, if you don't mind, I can keep it on. Just trying to figure this out. So for those of you who are watching for the first time, money date, why did I start doing the show and what is a money date, right? It's a funny concept where you put together the money aspect of what we all have to deal with with the fun and exciting concept of dating and so I thought if I bring the two together because let's face it one way or the other we all have to have money conversations it's either you have those conversations and discussions and planning sessions with your loved ones or you have them with someone like me who is an advisor so what one way or the other you have to face challenges you have to face good situations but i wanted to make it more fun and interesting so i thought well if i have to do this myself why don't i bring you all along with me so money date was born because i wanted to be more responsible with my money i didn't want to just spend you know a few minutes once a month not paying as much attention um, so i thought if i could attend to it every week for just a little bit of time, then I can accomplish big goals. So I've been trying to get you on board with me for the last six months to do the same thing. So that's the goal of a money date. But there's three things that I always, always remind you to keep track of. And those are our earnings, right? The, this year is almost over. And one of the tax tips I have for you is that maybe perhaps if you have the flexibility, you can defer your income um, into 2018 but that's for our later discussion right now I want you to know so how much money did you make this year do you actually now know can you pull up your latest pay stub and take a look and see what what actually has been happening but besides that so this is not a once a month once a year this is something for you to keep track on every week now the reason I like to focus on earning income right whether it's coming from your nine to five job or you have side streams of income on the side right whether it's real estate maybe you have a business or anything that com comes in and brings additional income all it is going to help you is have a clear picture and focus of how to cover your basic living expenses so that you can focus on the next point that i like to to um, for you to keep track of which is your savings goals. Next, next week, we're gonna talk about resetting your savings goals, resetting your financial goals, goals for 2018. But up until now, you should have had some kind of idea and way to keep track. And this is why I come on here and remind you about it every week. Because if you can do it in small, 
bite-sized pieces. It's not as intimidating. And if there is a correction that needed to be done, you can catch it early on. So that's why. And then the third piece, of course, the least favorite for everybody because for whatever reasons, maybe it's not the least favorite for you, spending, right? We've got to know where our money's going. It's simple as that, okay? It, the system that you create for yourself, it's, it's something that you can attain to and it does not involve a lot of time. Now, if you are struggling with keeping track of your expenses, I want you to be more on the top of it. For some of my clients and friends and colleagues who are more advanced and have a grip on it, they can graduate to more hands-off kind of programs and systems. And one of those I use is mint.com. I talk about it all the time. So mint.com allows me to keep track of my spending across all of my accounts, savings, checking, credit cards, it also allows me to keep track of my goals and savings for those goals, as well as the income that I receive. So, but, and I'm gonna teach another course sometime uh, next quarter, first quarter of 2018, uh, as far as how all of these pieces come together in something I call a money flow. So, but for today, if you're learning this for the first time, thank you for joining me. I am excited for 2018, I hope you are. It's never too late to make changes to your financial situation because there's always that reset point. Just because we started, because this year is ending and we're starting something new next year, that's great. But if at any point, and that's why I want you to check, out, check in frequently, you feel like you want a reset point, come together, let me know if you have questions. I'm excited and would love to share it with you. As you hop on here while I'm trying to figure out how to take this mask off, <laughs> which um, looks pretty exciting, uh, but I'm not getting the menu. So maybe I'll keep it on for the entire show. Um, as you join me here in the chat, if you wanna drop a note and say hello, it would be awesome um, to welcome you properly. If you find this useful, please share it out. Let your friends know why they need to watch something like this and then why they need to stay on the top of their money. Now, a couple of things we do before we get into the actual content discussion and the tips I have for you. So I want to talk about um, a money win. This is, a this is going to be a focus for our discussions next year, but money wins, right? And gratitude and realization of what you've done well, right? Forget about all the bad things. I want you to pause for a second and think about what have you done well in 2018. I've been asking you to do this every week, right? But now, since you have time, and maybe this is something you can sit down and do after our show, but pause maybe it's maybe it's one thing maybe it's two things maybe it's a lot of things i actually keep a journal of all my daily gratitudes right this is daily now a bigger type of planning i do is usually at the end of the year and so my money win and i tie everything all the activities i want you to remind you that all the activities that you guys do in your life are going to be tied in hi ali thanks for hopping on they're going to be tied into your finances one way or the other. You can argue with me on that, but I'm gonna prove you wrong because there's nothing you can do without needing some kind of capital, okay? So pause and reflect what has been awesome for the last 12 months, for the entire 2017, right? Hi, Carol, thanks for hopping on. Happy holidays, you guys. So my money win for the week, and then next, next week when we talk about resetting our priorities and goals, I'll talk about some of the other pieces of this question, but it's really been wonderful for me to take the time off to actually work on my business. I've been wanting to do this for a long time because I'm constantly busy, right? Working with clients, going from meeting to meeting, traveling quite a bit. 2017 has been a big year in terms of my travel. So this week, all this week, and I still have two more, three more days because I usually work on Saturday to kind of pause, right? Reflect back on what I want to do in terms of my business. Hi, Dwayne, my friend. Glad to have you here. Happy holidays. 
and what do I want to do, right? And what things I want to do differently, right? Because I oh, just I'm just like everybody else. I need a reset point. I need to refocus and have my goals um, on target so that I know what I'm working on. So let me know what has been wonderful for you. It ha there has to be something. You just may not be thinking about it because once you start sort of opening your mind up to these possibilities right of appreciating good things in life everything changes it's it, it it's amazing this has been an amazing transformation for me in this uh in 2017 i started in april so not quite a full year but as much of the benefits as i uh i have recognized and and still still recognizing and feeling it's been phenomenal so i welcome you to do that so drop and drop a comment in the chat let me know how things are also i'd love to know what you're doing for holidays how are you celebrating this week if you celebrate christmas wonderful if you celebrate hanukkah or other holidays let me know what do you do it's actually interesting um so i did take monday off obviously because it's the 25th but i was back on in my office on tuesday and it was quiet nobody it was nobody in the office is i it's like i had my building to myself the other funny part that Yuri and I, we almost have a bet going on <laughs> for all this week. So we um, I, normally, right, I try to maintain my routine. I try to wake, go to bed at the same time. Um, I try to wake up or we have to wake up at the same time because I'm going to six o'clock in the morning class. So we're doing all of it this week, but, we, but before we got to the gym on Tuesday morning, uh, right around six o'clock, and because it's, it's kind of like when you drive up to the gym, you have to turn left and then you can actually see the parking lot right in front of the building. And I was like, well, before we turn, Yuri, what do you think it's going to be? How many people or how many cars we're going to see? And normally, right at the beginning of the week, it's full. I mean, you cannot find parking. And so this time we turned and it was a quarter, right? A quarter, it's usually two blocks of parking spots, a quarter of what you usually see. So anyway i i there's no judgment on my part but it's just a funny funny experience that you see so everybody's taking off enjoying the holidays let me know what you guys are doing so i'm gonna get into talking about last we have a two more days we have thursday of this week and we have um friday and possibly saturday because the first falls on a monday so here are some tax tips right we all know that the new tax reform was passed last week i kind of covered it a little bit last Wednesday but here are some of the things that you can take advantage of if these um, these new rules are gonna apply to you it's not for everybody so you kind of have to be this advice is a bit customized but it's also a little bit more general because you have to consult with your tax person so if if you hear something that I'm describing and you're not sure let me know um, or better yet reach out to your, your accountants or your tax preparer so they can give you a proper, more customized advice, okay? So here I go. So what, what, I, what do I have? There, here's a couple of tips um, around taxes that are gonna change in 2018. So you guys need to remember that all the changes that you're hearing and reading on the news are gonna be applicable for 2018, the glasses I have, 2018 taxes okay so 2017 is gonna be going based hi sally good to have you happy holidays 2017 tax returns that we're going to file by april of next year april 15th of 2018 are going to be still on the old rules okay now because there are a lot of changes that are going to take place here are some things that we're going to do so number one and this is the most discussed item which is prepaying your property taxes okay now i was discussing this earlier with a number of clients um, as well as my cpa yesterday but you have to understand what it actually does to your tax return when you prepay the taxes okay just because you hear the chatter out there that you need to prepay taxes because the deduction is going away and you all you can deduct is ten thousand dollars you have to understand how doing that today or tomorrow or Friday, right, in 2017 is actually going to make an impact. 
So the way that the rules are going to change is up until end of the year, we were able to deduct all of our property taxes. So if you're, I'll give you an example, and this is more applicable for, st for states that have properties of high values, which is California, New York, New Jersey, right? And also they have high taxes and Connecticut. Um, there's a couple more, but these are the, the ones that have the, the most significant impact. So if your tax, let me give you an example. Average home around where we live here, and, and this is Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area, is let's say a million and a half, okay? So property tax for something, for a home of this value will be at least 15,000 and if not 20,000. Now, the way that the rules work now and still applicable for 2017 tax return is that you can actually deduct the entire amount. There was never a limit on amount of property tax you can deduct. In 2018 and beyond, all we can deduct is $10,000. So if you are living in California or those other high states where your taxes, property taxes are more than $10,000, it is probably wise for you to consider paying your 2018 taxes in the next couple of days, okay? Now, the question comes up is, do you have reserves where you can pull from and do something like that? Because you also have to understand that prepaying taxes and how that affects, and I'll give you an example. So let's, let's say we had, I'll use another example. Let's say you had, your, your taxes were $10,000. Okay, so you came up with $10,000 and you're like, I'm gonna prepay that, that sounds really good, I'm gonna be really smart about all of these decisions. If you are, and I'm just gonna use one tax bracket, right, and they're changing for 2018 as well, but if you're in a 25% tax bracket, right, that's gonna give you $2,500 in savings. Okay, you take, you take the amount, multiply it by 25%. So think about this, right, and I'm, totally agreeing with that, right? It's a good idea. Hi, Yuri, thanks for hopping on. But in order to save $2,500 in taxes, you have to come up with 10 right now. If you can do that, that's awesome. But if you are struggling and it's on a stretch for you, then maybe it's not a good idea. Now, number two is the most discussed item is state and local taxes. California is being one of them, okay? New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut as well. So what, and I'll give you an example of what our accountant suggested for Yuri and I to do. Now, state and local taxes are usually paid through either payroll deductions, right? So when you get a paycheck, federal taxes are being withheld, state taxes, local taxes, and then some other deductions, Social Security, Medicare, and so forth. So if you were employed for the entire year, hi Katie, Good to have you, happy holidays. So if you were employed for the entire year, the taxes were taken out of your uh, you know, pay. So most likely you've, based on your income, you've paid enough, unless you had other sources of income, so that will you know, skew the, um, the, the formula a little bit because all of your income has to be put together. So for those of you like Yuri and I who have our own businesses, right, and we depend on getting a paycheck through those businesses, we have to pay taxes either, we do have uh, payroll uh, that's, that's, that our accountant is running, but we also have to make estimated quarterly payments. Now, what our, our, our accountant had us do is actually prepay the amount that was estimated based on our previous year taxes before, actually we did it last week. So, if you feel like you've done a good calculation and you know that prepaying your state taxes because that's another deduction that's going to go away. And the only way you can deduct your state and local taxes on your tax return is if you paid them in the year that you're deducting it for. So for, for 2017, it has to be paid by the end of the year, okay? So if it's gonna make, again, just like with an example, um, yes, Yuri, it does not make sense to spend a dollar so that you're saving 30 cents. Just like with an example I gave um, on the property taxes. Hey, Katie, good to have you. So just, just like that, you have to understand that maybe it sounds really good, 
maybe it's an exciting um, opportunity, but how do you come up with, with so much capital unless you have a, a hefty emergency reserves and you can tap into it? And I remember, this is one of those things that I always remind you, maybe it does not make sense for you to do that. Okay, so number three tip um, in terms of what you can work on is funding 529 college savings plans. Now, I am excited about this particular change for the 529 plans. I actually, full disclosure, back in the day, I used to volunteer slash work for Maryland 529 college savings plan. So I used to go out to schools and fairs and actually tell parents why they need to save money in those types of plans. And so I am excited for the change that's coming because typically and historically, the funds that were saved in the 529 plans, and almost every state has one, um, were only allowed to be used to pay college-related ex college expenses, okay? So you could never use those funds to pay for private school and other types of uh, expenses other than college. So what's changing for next year is that now you can pay private school tuition with the 529 uh, plan dollars. And what's neat about 529 plans is that the money that goes in for some states, and there's um, up to 30, I actually had to look this up, up to 30 states allow a deduction on your state income taxes. Again, the same formula, right? So if you have a, a, situa a family situation where this may be applicable is could be the following. If you have kids who are going to private school and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to pre- Prefund my 529 plan, get a deduction, right, on my state tax return. And again, same formula, you're going to spend a dollar to get 30 cents savings. And then turn around and then use the money to pay for, uh, for the actual tuition next year or the year after. The advantage, the real advantage, right, of the 529 plans is that the money that goes in it, when you contribute the funds, they go grow tax free okay in order for you to benefit from something like that it makes the most sense if you kept the money in those accounts longer okay so if it's just a pass through so you can get a smaller a small deduction which is awesome i don't you know don't disagree with that it's fine but again think about it if you aren't quite prepared to pre-fund the 529 plans then don't do it but do remember for future years that private school tuition can be funded. Maybe perhaps you already have a 529 plan that has a substantial amount of money. Now you can start using it to pay those um, expensive private schools. So, all right, number four is charitable contributions. So just because there's gonna be changes in standard, standard deductions, it's actually gonna double Right? So what actually happened in the past is that a lot of people used to contribute to charities because they wanted to use, so there's a standard deduction that is allowed on your tax return and there is something called itemized deduction. Itemized deduction is a category of deductions that has a lot of different line items, property taxes being one of them, charitable contributions, state and local taxes, medical expenses. So a lot of people, what they did is they, they spend it the itemized deduction category because this the standard deduction historically has been very small it's it's usually like six thousand dollars sixty seven hundred dollars and then for married couple it's double that so what's happening for next year is that it's going to increase tremendously okay so now all of the sudden the idea for charitable contributions right does not look all that appealing but what i want you what i want i want to challenge you to think about charities and contributions that you're doing to those charities not based on the tax deductions it helps right awesome right that it helps you reduce the taxes but what's your actual reason for giving and if it is a reason for you to write off the contributions on your tax return so be it but it's going to be changing next year. So if that's the case, maybe you need to consider donor advised funds. And donor advised funds are specific types of investments that allow you to put a big chunk of contribution in the year that you need a deduction. 
So if you need a huge deduction because it's going away in 2018, in 2017, that might be a strategy for you to follow. Okay, so consider doing that. But again, you really only have two days, two business days to do something like that. Now, <coughs> now for some of you, like myself, and uh, there's quite a few on um, here on the live stream who are business owners. So if you have an opportunity to defer income, right, into the next year, not receive a big commission check, um, or maybe sign up a new client, maybe you can consider doing that because, you, as you know, the big difference, right, and the big win of this new tax reform is that we're going to get a, uh, tax brackets that are different. So they're going to be two percentage points lower. So that means the income you're going to get is going to be paid in the lower tax bracket. So consider doing that. Now, um, two more things, and they relate to the mortgage, uh, mortgage and home equity line of credit. So some of you have um, home equity line of credits, Historically, you were able to deduct interest on the home equity line of credit up to $100,000. Now, I was doing the same calculation in my head when I was trying to justify the fact that because the interest deduction is going away, so what happens with the home equity line of credit, that loan, right, historically it's been a good idea to uh, fund uh, remodeling projects it's been a good idea to fund vacations right maybe start in, investing in real estate because interest rates were very low they're still pretty low and you were able to deduct the interest now starting in 2018 all of that is going away so what you're gonna end up with is just another loan that does not have the option to deduct interest Okay. Hi, Brianna. Thanks for hopping on. So I challenge you to think about whether you want to pay down the loan because in example I have, let's say you have $50,000 worth of um, home equity loan, um, line of credit or home equity loan. Your balance is $50,000. let us say you're paying 4% interest. So in the, any given year, you are going to have about $2,000 worth of interest payments. So that's going away. So I, I challenge you to think whether it, it makes sense to pay it down because you're gonna save $2,000. So you have to come up with quite a bit of money to do that. And my last but not least tip I have for you is that if you have a mortgage and you wanted to, to squeeze in one last extra payment, um, that's probably a good idea to do that. That's something that I think most of you, if you have mortgages, are uh, should be able to uh, figure out because it shouldn't be a huge amount and so it just gives you an additional deduction on your both mortgage interest and a little bit of a property taxes for 2017. That is all I've got. There's quite a few things for you to to think about and act quickly. Reach out if you have questions. Let me know. Hi Danell. Thanks for hopping on. Um, I'm about to close here so you may have to watch this and replay. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, I am around and uh, filter, filtering all of this is it's um, it's a quite a bit of change and a lot of a lot of panic is happening. But I think um, I think it can be avoided. Um, before I close, hi, <laughs> good to have you here. Before I close, I usually like to share quotes. So here's what I have: During holidays, people tend to forget their priorities. Okay, so this is another reason why I show up here every week to remind you of that. So what are your priorities? It's about spending time together and it's not about who can spend the most money. So is there's a couple more days left in this year, consider rethinking what are your priorities? What do you want to do better next year? And let's connect in 2018. This is the last money date for the year. And I'd love for you to start on a clean, clean, clean sheet of paper and write down your goals. Hi, Charlene. Thanks for watching. This is all I've got for you today. I am wishing you a very happy holiday season. Let me know if you have any questions regarding what we discussed. Thanks for watching and take care.